Hi everyone, in this video I will give you an overview of how to synthesize halohydrins and haloethers. These reactions can be carried out using a halogen like Br2 or Cl2. The halogens iodine and fluorine, I2 and F2 respectively, are not reactive enough or too reactive for this reaction. Our first example up here involves using water as our solvent and this gives the halohydrin. The halohydrin has an alcohol functionality as well as the halogen. A halo ether, as the name says, you might imagine has an ether functionality, which it does here. The R group would come from the R group of my alcohol. And so we've added a bromine and an alkoxy group to my alkene. Compare those two reactions to the halogenation reaction at the bottom where we've added simply two bromines. The key difference in these three reactions is the solvent. In the halogenation reaction, we have an aprotic solvent. There's no acidic proton there to pull off at some point. Whereas alcohols and water are considered to be protic solvents where at some point they can lose their proton throughout the course of this reaction. Let's first take a look at the regioselectivity of this reaction. Is one constitutional isomer produced in excess of the other? We have to look at the experimental evidence from this. So when we carry out this reaction in the lab, isolate and purify our products, we find that the major product has the bromine added to the primary site, the less substituted side, and the alcohol adding to the more substituted site. In this case, it is secondary. So this is our major product, and we get minor amounts of the constitutional isomer, having the OH on the primary site and the bromine at the secondary site. So because we have one constitutional isomer in excess of the other, this reaction is regioselective. The OH adds to the more substituted site, and the halogen adds to the less substituted site. Let's take a look at another example where this alkene now is equally substituted. In our first example, we had a monosubstituted alkene where there was a less substituted end and a more substituted end. Here we have equal substitution at both ends of my alkene. When we carry this reaction out, the halogen can add to one side and the alcohol can add to the other. And because they are equally substituted, there's nothing to drive the selectivity. There's no reason for one group to add on one carbon versus the other. So we end up with equal amounts, 50% of this one, 50% of this one, equal amounts of two constitutional isomers. So this particular example is not regioselective. The regioselectivity depends on the structure of your alkene. If you have a asymmetric alkene that is differently substituted, the reaction will be regioselective. Finally, let's take a look at the stereochemistry of our products. We'll be looking to know if this reaction is stereoselective or not by looking at how many stereoisomers are produced. Have some stereoisomers been produced in excess of the others, or have we produced equal amounts of two stereoisomers? In our first example, I've um, drawn our major product. How many chiral centers have been generated here? This product has one chiral center. So there are two possible stereoisomers of this compound. We can have the OH going forward, or we can have the OH going backwards. These two compounds are enantiomers. When we analyze our product mixture, we find that these two products are produced in equal amounts. Equal mixture of enantiomers is known as racemic, and because there are two possible stereoisomers that have been produced in equal amounts, this example of the halohydrin synthesis is not stereoselective. Let's take a look at this cyclic example with cyclohexene. We will add chlorine and water to our double bond, and this proceeds via what is known as an anti-addition, where the halogen has added to the opposite face of the alcohol. 
This is consistent with the observations that we saw in the halogenation reaction itself. When we added two halogens to the double bond, it also proceeded via an anti-addition. In this case, um, we produced two chiral centers, and two chiral centers would mean there would be up to four possible stereoisomers in that family. Since two have been produced in excess of the other two, this example is stereoselective for this synthesis of the halohydrin. Of course, if we replace any of the water with an alcohol in the examples that I've shown you, the outcomes will be identical um, with the ether functionality, the same stereochemistry, the same regiochemistry. In another video, we'll study the mechanism to understand why this reaction is regioselective and why it proceeds via an anti-addition. Thanks for watching.